Never fear, I'm is here. Here I'm is. What you gonna do? It's time to break on through. Now nah, there's my main main, Callie Hellstrom. All right, there's Brad Mullins. My main main, Eric Burton, all the way from Wilmington Town. Kit E. Cat, whom I finally met in person uh, the other night at the Obsessed show. Nice to meet you, Kit E. Cat. All right, now y'all coming in. Hey, this is rude, but uh, I'm going to do this. Mm. Sorry about that, y'all. Had to do it. All right, everybody's getting in here. Everybody's getting in. Everybody is cold and rainy as it is here anyway. Where is it? How is it where you are? Hey, Jason. I see Mondo's in. And it's a very good thing Mondo is in here because uh, um, that's the first thing I want to talk about is Mondo Braswell. Leighton Underwood. I met Leighton Underwood at the Obsessed show. His band was uh, was opening for the Obsessed. Nice to meet you, Leighton. All right, Andy Miller's here. Morticia May's here with us live. All right, well, let's get going. The main reason I want to talk about Mondo Braswell is because uh, he is uh, anti-scene fan man extraordinaire. You're like, well, damn, you played a bunch of us on here, you fool. What are you talking about? Well, I'll tell you why, because he started a page on Facebook, a fan page called Destructo Central. And they just hit a little milestone here. I mean, they reached 1,000 participants. And I want to thank you, Mondo, for taking the initiative to even do that page because it does, it does help. And, uh, um, Mondo basically posts all my personal posts and the pa and the posts from Antisync page that uh, have to do with Antisync, and posts them on Destructo Central. So um, you never miss a thing. So let's let's drink a salute. To Mondo Braswell and Destructo Central, I think it's a nice place where we all get together sometime. We all get together in the type of weather, and we do Destructo Central. Cheers, Mondo. Ah. A little warm break on through brew tonight. Mmm. Everybody getting their hoodies? I've seen a few pictures come up, but you know what? what's happening is people are taking a picture of the hoodie laying on their uh, couch or their uh, bed or their table. And, um, that, that, that type of thing. Uh, but see... I know what that looks like because I had like 60 of them in here uh, laying around all over the place before I packed them up. I want to see pictures of them on 
you. Show the people what you look like. Give the people what they want. Now, Nick Stone, you got one. I want to see a picture of you wearing it. You don't have to be, you, you don't have to, uh, have to put on the hoodie and go down to uh, Olin Mills and get a professional done photo. Man, you can, you can take a picture. With, matter of fact, I prefer, I like to see you in your hoodies in your working class environment. On your, uh, on your, um, on your forklift, in your warehouse, in your shop. Even if you're outside fighting the elements, you should be doing it in your anti-scene hoodie. That's what it's for. No, I don't want to say this, man. It could be a collector's item one day. But, man, forget collector's items one day. Edward took a picture. Edward Brad Edward. Mondo Braswell took a picture of him wearing his. That's good. So hoodie pictures. I mean, look, I think it's great. When y'all, especially when, we, you know, we do a mailing and it all goes out at one time and you all uh, post pictures of what you got. I appreciate that. I love it. But when it's something like that, I want to see you. And you know, I'm always posting pictures of me. Y'all know what old JC looks like. Let me, let's see what y'all look like. Britt Richards is here. Saying, what's up, old friend? Let me tell you something. Britt Richards and I played in a band together. Damn, Britt. Was it the late 70s or early 80s? Early 80s, definitely, Right? In New London, North Carolina. Great to hear from you, Britt. All right, so I've gone on and on about the hoodie. Greg Crawford says, sorry, I'm like, man, you ain't late. This thing goes on and I'm in when even when I'm done, it stays up. Oh, Britt said it was the late 70s. No, Mark, I played in a band with David Vincent in the early 80s when I moved to Charlotte. Me and David Vincent, you know, I, I guess so we grew up together, but, but, you know, early 80s. Um, when we were both first getting into playing music, we had a band together. <clears throat> Hopefully, by the end of this week, or the beginning of next week, I will have in my possession the picture disc. The seven inch picture disc of anti scene and sloppy seconds. And I'm going to tell y'all. It is a sight to see. It's a beautiful thing. If Once you see it, you're going to go, damn, I don't play picture disc. I hang them up. You're going to have to buy two because both sides are equally beautiful. Actually, you're going to have to buy three. You got to hang up the anti-scene side. You got to hang up the sloppy second side. And you got to have one to play. Either to impress your family or to run them off. Whichever the case may be, it does not matter to me. So that should be happening soon. The guy from Failure Records is telling me uh, there's been a great response already. So uh, thank you. Thank you for... Uh, look, I don't care if you get it from the label, man. As long, you know what I want? I want the thing out. I want it out there. This is a crew neck sweatshirt, uh, Mondo. Dr. Death and Terry Gordy. This design came from Japan. So if anybody gets all wrecked and out of control about the design, oh man, you're taking some money off my table, son. Uh, no, we're not. Okay. Picture this. I talked about that. Okay. <clears throat> 
We had a band meeting yesterday via cell phone. All four of us right there on the screen. Just because the place go. Dan, what are y'all talking about? You just came off the road. Well, you know what? We don't we never slow down. There's going to be a live broadcast with the Here to Ruin Your Groove lineup, or as close as we can get to it, which would in, now entail Sir Barry Hannibal, Trip McNeil, Walt Wheat, and myself. We're going to perform Here to Ruin Your Groove live in its entirety when the new deluxe two record set reissue from TKO Records is released. Yeah, but it's going to happen. Oh, oh, it's happening. Like a moose knocking a guy up out of the damn picnic. That's going to happen. And um, while we're playing live, that is when the deluxe reissue will go on sale. How about that? What else did we discuss? Oh, more, st more stuff. I, should I even tell you some of this stuff? Plans for a 40-year anniversary release exclusive to that weekend. What'd you say? Did you say 40 year anniversary? Yeah, we also discussed the 40 year anniversary. I have selected a date. I have selected a place. I don't want to say anything right now until everything is in stone. But with the person I'm dealing with, I'm pretty sure it's going to be in stone very soon. Maybe by the next break on through, I'll have you a date and a time. I can give you a general idea. September is what we're looking at. Everyone always asks me when you say, oh, yeah, we're doing 40 years. You got any surprises? When have we not had any surprises? Man, you got to tell me some. Tell me one time we didn't have surprises on the anniversary show. Man, we're going to have surprises like you ain't never, ever, ever seen. Can you dig it? You will. Uh, you know what? I'm going to send this out to my main, main Brandon, or road dog. I saw your post today about Amy Winehouse, and on the road you said, Hey, hey, Jeff, hey, Wayne, you got me an Amy Winehouse top 10. And I started it this morning. But then something came up, and I don't know what happened. Oh, I was late for work today because my clock didn't go off, and I still had half a sick day, so I just went in late. But, um, man, I don't know what distracted me but I'll, I'll do Amy Winehouse next week this week and and, and well, shit, I'm not going to explain I'm just going to do top 10 war movies now I'm concentrating on modern history. And I consider modern history to be from World War I to the present. Because if you're doing war movies, I mean, you'd have to have Braveheart in there, wouldn't you? You'd have to have Last Samurai. There's probably 8,000 Kung Fu movies you'd have to have in there. But I, I came up with a I came up with a serious um, dilemma. 
I tried to narrow it down to 10. I couldn't do it, man. Let me count how many I got here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm doing my top 15. Now, see, Callie, there you go. Outlaw Josie Wells. Now, see, that's... I consider that kind of long-ago history. So, I don't have... I don't have stuff about the Civil War. I don't have stuff about... Um, a revolutionary war. I don't have stuff about uh, the early European stuff. I don't have, you know, anything like that. This, you'll get the drift when I start going, okay? And I, man, I think only my top five. Or in any kind of order. The rest of them, man, I'm just I'm just letting them fly. Whenever I see it on here, I'm gonna say it, and we're gonna talk about it. Oh, I, I can tell you what um, spurred this on. I've had a few of you, man, like uh, four or five. For you to pay attention, and you know the kind of stuff I like, and I and I, and I appreciate it. You write me and tell me, man, hey, hey, damn, Jeff Clay, you got to check this out because you're going to like this, man. This is good shite right here. And a lot of you have done that about that new uh, All Quiet on the Western Front. Can anyone else give a heart or a thumbs up to that? Uh, testifying that it's good as hell. I'm going to check it out. But anyway, I'm going to get started. Now, y'all all know where my taste lies. So some of this you're not going to be surprised about at all. Some of it you're going to go, Damn, Jeff Clayton, what are you trying to do, bro? you got to tell me something. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to start with the original... Torah, Torah, Torah. I intended to do my research and write the year that all these uh, came out on Basana, but I did not. I was doing other shit this morning while I was late. And then when I wasn't late, I was working class and I was working. So, man, look. I hate to be rude in the front of y'all, but this is sitting right here, man. I gotta, I gotta have me some. Hmm. I know y'all are like, damn, Jeff Clayton, you're a damn. 1970, Morticia May came through for me. Morticia, maybe you can be my official date keeper here. Next. And I don't know if this was a remake, done into a remake, but the original, Midway. Hmm. Next. And this one's this one is kind of hard for me to watch, man. This is a hard movie. Uh, not hard for me to watch, but it's it's disturbing. I, any of you people have seen it, you know, Platoon. Y'all like Platoon, right? Next. I don't know too many people have seen this one. I recently got it on DVD. And I hadn't seen it in years. I haven't seen the new DVD. I just remember seeing it as a kid on TV when it did a network premiere. Man, this had to be 74 or 75 or something like that. But uh, it's about the big tank battle in Germany. Man, the Battle of the Bulge. Now, I know that sounds like a movie of someone struggling with weight loss 
or it could be a porn flick, but it's not. It's a bad, it's a war flick, and it's, I just remember it being damn good because it stuck with me for years. I love watching. I can't wait to watch that DVD. Even the first lady likes her some war movies, so uh, I'm sure she'll watch it with me. Next. And I know y'all what y'all gonna say, you damn what damn the only reason you like that one's because of the guy that wrote Planet of the Apes wrote it. Well that is what made me watch it. But it's a damn good movie. The Bridge Over the River Kwai. Bridge over the river Kwai. I see, Tom, you're asking about Taps. Now, is that a war movie? Now, see, there's some movies that are that have a military um, theme, but are they a war movie? They're military movies, right? Next. Since we just got done with uh, Battle of the Bulge and we're on tanks, let me tell you, this is a new one, a newer, newer one. I say new and something, it could still be 20 years old. Fury. I think Brad Pitt was in that one. And I think the same goes for war movies that goes for um, Godzilla movies and stuff like that. Man, when CGI finally got Like great, not just I. Those kind of movies really benefited. Yeah, I agree. Stripes is not a war movie, but it's a military, military thing comedy. Right there, you go. But uh, man, Fury and the next couple I'm gonna name, CGI. You know, it was, has developed so far along at this point that it is a definite plus to these kind of movies. And with that being said, I got to say, man, uh, in my list of top favorite war movies, Dunkirk. Did y'all see Dunkirk? Man, I saw it in the theater, man. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be bringing it up bringing up this effect, but man, seeing those with those nice sound systems and it's being so loud, it almost shakes your chair, man. Dunkirk. Now here's one a lot of you older dudes are gonna remember. Hell, some of you young guys probably know about good ass movies too. The Dirty Dozen. What an all star cast that was. Even had Don Rickles in it. I know you're all like, man, you're the worst damn podcast host ever, eating in front of everybody. Well, yeah, okay. Um, another disturbing one, and I don't think it's so much focused on war so much as the effects of war. So maybe maybe this one don't even uh, qualify. But the Killing Fields. What do y'all think? Does that qualify? I'm going to say this one. I know some of y'all are going to go, damn, man, well, what do you mean? It's a mainstream shite right there or something. But I'm going to tell you what, when, when something's good, it's good, man. And sometimes there's a reason why a bunch of people like it, because it is so good. And I'm talking about Saving Private Ryan. That Normandy scene, man... It's crazy. That was some scary shit. My main man, Jeff Martin, just said, Deer Hunter, man, I, I've struggled 
about putting that on this list. It would definitely be in my top 20. It didn't make my top 15, though. But I like it. I know a lot, a lot of people say, oh, man, Deer Hunter, I like the hour of it's a wedding. But, you know, I like that. I like that buildup. Okay, here I go with my top one, two, three, four. Here we go. Here I go with my top five right here, and I, I'm gonna talk about these a little bit. Um, and it, okay, <coughs> break on through brew. Dead presidents. Dead presidents ain't a war movie. Well, you you would be right in a way because um, what happens if you've never seen Dead Presidents? It's like three movies in one because it take it goes in three parts. The first part is like a typical young guys in the sixties coming of age movie. And and that alone, if if the movie went that way all the way around, it would have been a great movie. But no, their coming of age ends up with a couple of them, or all of them, going to Vietnam. So the middle part of the movie is war movie. And it is crazy. But then the last part of the movie is a return home drama and how they get involved in um, in crime trying just trying to make ends meet now you know that they're back from they're back in the world and trying to trying to make it happen trying to make, trying to exist and it ain't it ain't going good I'm not gonna spoil anything because if any of y'all want to see it I suggest watching it not only to mention does it have the greatest soundtrack and man, they 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 place these songs in some of these scenes. Now, some of them are you just like, oh, okay, well that, that's nice. But when it gets into the crime part, the third the third chapter of the movie, man, some of the scenes where they're driving and they're scheming what they're gonna do, and they place that Isaac Hayes music in there when they're driving at night, man, it is perfect. Perfect. Next, where eagles dare. It's not a misfit song. It's not an Iron Maiden song. Actually, it is a misfit and an Iron Maiden song, but it was a movie first. It starred Richard Burton and Clint Eastwood. It's also where... Probably most of America got their first glimpse of Ingrid Pitt. But the movie is awesome. It's beautifully shot, man. It's like I would have loved to have seen that movie on the big screen. It would have been incredible. It's incredible on TV. And I know some of y'all got some big ass TVs, but man, just to see it in the theater, I bet it was uh, I bet it was fantastic. I doubt I'll ever get to see that, but who knows? All right, here's the big three right here. And they could all be tied, man. Uh, but they all have special, they all hold a special place for me because of certain, I'll tell you. One or the third of the three, <laughs> one, third of the three, Patton. And let me tell you how I saw Patton. Now you've heard my heard me talking about. Um, well, you guys know my relationship with my dad was kind of strained. Hell, I wrote songs about. It. I wrote a song about it. Uh, stuff like that, but. Um, I'm not looking for some violin and, oh, man, we're so sorry. I'm not looking for none of that. I'm just saying the times that we did things together was kind of few and far between. 
But for some reason, when we lived up in um, outside of Baltimore, Maryland, in the late 60s and early 70s, man, he'd go to the drive-in. He'd just go by himself, but he'd take me too. And man, I remember I saw that, like, thanks to him, I saw Escape from the Planet of the Apes when it was released. What was that, 71? Yeah, I saw, it was a new release, man. Hey, and see, so I, I think I've told y'all this, but you used to call me Jeffy. My whole family used to call me Jeffy. Hey, Jeffy, come on, let's get see, get see one of them Planet of the Apes movies. All right. <laughs> well, yeah. He took me to see MASH, <laughs> but he took me to see Patton. And I don't think he knew, he thought, oh, you know, he's going to enjoy this or he's going to understand it. I, I think he figured, man, if I eat some popcorn and drink a drink or something, eventually I'll just fall asleep. And who knows what he had going on. But, man, I will never, I don't know even know how old I was. But Patton, on a drive-in screen, that opening scene with that American flag and him coming out, giving that, that great rap. How great is that rap? Well, Joe Young used to have it on cassette tape and CD, and he'd play it before we'd go on stage. Scott Savage made me a cassette tape one time of Patton's speech on the wrong speed. Man, I used to listen to that all the time. Just like, probably look like one of them hippies on some damn 70s made-for-TV movie. Like, yeah, man, like, wow, man. <laughs> but man, that, that movie, I mean, just that, if you just watch the opening scene, man, you can walk away and go, damn, that was good as hell. But it's, it's good. It's good all the way through. Yeah. Patton. This one's tough. This is the toss-up right here. I think I'm going to go this route, though. Full Metal Jacket. I mean, I guess there weren't even big, gigantic war scenes in that, but it was all about being over there. But, man, that movie is great. Good gosh, man. The Drill Sergeant. Him alone made the damn movie. <clears throat> I didn't mark out Full Metal Jacket, and I marked out my number one. Apocalypse Now. Man, to me, now me, now personally, I like movie scores in films. But when they do use popular music, if it's properly placed, now that can make all the difference in the world. And in Apocalypse Now, and I have a, <clears throat> I know you guys are like, well, damn, man, you gotta tell, oh, I have a very special memory of this movie, and as it involves my main man and new ultra lineup anti sing guitarist Walt Wheat. Man, we was we were down in Hattiesburg and uh, staying with the Wheats, but this is when they had a much smaller compound. And they had a surround sound system. And man, me and Walt each had us a damn recliner. And we're watching Apocalypse Now with this damn sound system cranking. And there's helicopter scenes, man. And you're right. Flight of the Valkyrie. And when they play the end by the doors. Man, it was just like, it was an actual physical experience. Where we had that thing cranked and it was just like, you know. <laughs> but the movie, the movie's so damn good. I mean, I, I, 
I know there's a really long redo, re, redo ep, uh, version. I don't think I've ever seen that. I, I just seen the regular version. I don't know. Maybe maybe Walt played that redone version, but it had about an hour extra. I don't know. But uh, I love that film. Hopefully, I named some that you guys will want to check out at some point. Um, there's probably some I'm missing. Well, that that rounded up a nice forty minute break on through right there, bum. Walt says we watched the original theatrically. I thought so, because it... I don't remember. I didn't remember anything different about it. <clears throat> well, hopefully... We won't be seeing that stuff uh, in reality here in... Uh, Modern history, like current history. I don't know. It all could change after tonight. Who knows? Well, as always, I appreciate you guys showing up here with me. I apologize once again for eating in front of you. I'm probably going to do it again. But, uh, hell, don't forget now, post pictures in either in Destructo Central or on Anti-Scene page of y'all wearing your Anti-Scene hoodies now. Let people see what you look like. Oh, and by the way, I just want to say, uh, going to see the Obsessed Friday and seeing their new four-piece, or Friday, Thursday, this past Thursday, uh, seeing their new lineup, four-piece lineup. Uh, man, they're fantastic. I can't wait to share the stage with them some in 23. And I'll tell you what, y'all going to see some anti-scene in 23 now. Callie says I need to do top 10 westerns. Well, you know what? Maybe that'll be next time. Maybe I'll do Amy Winehouse and top 10 westerns. I think that's a good subject to go together. Mark wants to know what the tour... It fell apart. It just fell apart. It's, it's too long a story to say now as I'm checking on out of here. Oh! Oh! Mondo just reminded me. No, I, I announced a ho holiday mofos program coming up in December. Man, that also fell through. There's nothing. No holiday anti scene this year, man. I'm telling you, uh, Mobile, Alabama, that was it for uh, 2022. There's my daughter, Carrie Clayton. You guys go check out her Facebook page. She is doing a 64-mile walk for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Now, that is a charity that I can get behind. And I would like for y'all to go and, and sponsor her. Uh, make a donation if you can. It's going to a great cause, and St. Jude has helped her her family with my granddaughter, Little Winter. So, uh, check it out. Carrie Clayton, K-E-R-R-I-E -R -R -E, Clayton Davis. Andy Miller says, top 10 Christmas. Oh, oh, oh that, it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I got special guests coming on for that one, too. But, um, guys, gals, have a great rest of your week. 
Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it as always. I always look forward to seeing y'all come listen to me yak a while. And uh, I appreciate you. And if you see me out in public, come up and introduce yourself. I enjoy meeting you. All right? Everyone, take care. Have a good one. See ya.